All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. What we're looking at is an AR9 10 and a half inch upper by Palmetto State Armory. Now, this one's pretty cool and that I've had it for a while. I've run it and I've handed it out to a couple of other individuals and they've run it as well and never had any malfunctions. I'm going to take it out to the range here in a few minutes and we're going to run the daylights out of it and just have some fun. But before we do that, I wanted to kind of go over some of the details. From the rear to the front, one of the things is it does come with the Gen 4 bolt carrier group. And one of the things we are going to do in this video, because there are some questions out there. I was actually looking through some of the questions on Palmetto State Armory's website, and people were asking what the difference is between a Gen 4 and the hybrid bolt carrier group. And we're going to talk about that in a couple seconds. All right. It does come with just a mil spec charging handle. We'll go ahead and probably change that out if we're going to be using this for anything other than just a fun gun. Uh, let's move it forward here. It's got pick rails all the way to the front. This has the Palmetto State Armory proprietary handguard, which is a lightweight handguard, which is very similar to this carbine length one. As you can see right here, you've got M lock on the top on this guy. You've got pick rails. Well, let's just talk about this thing. I'm getting all mixed up. Anyway, we got some uh, Picatinny rail sections up here. It is an M lock rail section. You do have a QD point here and a QD point there. M lock sections on the sides, opposing, and then on the bottom as well. I'm a big fan of this rail section. I really am. The barrel is an A2 profile barrel, even though there is no gas block. And the bird cage is just a regular old bird cage. Now, just to let you guys know, this is a one half by 36 inch thread. And the reason that's important is because it's not a one half by 28, like you would have on a regular AR. If you're going to put one of these guys right here on a muzzle brake, this is from, uh, what is this, Strike Industries? I run this one. This one is because it's economical, but it's what one of my local gun stores had on hand that fit that thread count right there. There are some uh, probably some better options out there, but you know what? The best option you have is one that's on hand. All right. So the barrel is a one and 10 inch twist. Uh, pretty much that's it. Now the cool thing is, is this slick side right here. I love the way they've done this. It is actually really, really nice. It is contoured. You've got a little bit of a, a shell deflection right there. But other than that, it is a slick side. That is about all the details that are really important. The bolt, we'll talk about that here in a minute, but I want to catch all the stuff on the barrel. Chrome Molly Vanadium Steel. The barrel finish is nitride. And I've shot this thing and I've had an absolute blast in it. But one in 10 twist on a PCC chamber, pistol caliber carbine. All right, let's go ahead and put that away and let's talk about the differences between the Gen 4 and the hybrid, which is the previous model right here. Here we go. I'm going to bring it on in. All right, so let's take a look at these things from front to back. Now, basically, they are almost identical, but you can see where the key is here. These have a little bit of a difference in space. They're identical in height. The contour is just a tad difference in that you have this little cutout right here and here. And what that does is that this whole surface area is the sliding portion. This is in contact with the interior of your receiver. As with this one, your contact points are here, here. This is cut out right here as opposed to that one, and here. Now, on this particular specimen that I have, there are some ridges in there. And somebody told me those ridges are there to provide a reservoir for lubricant. I, I can't confirm that. But in any case, you can look at it. Uh, one of the things is, is this, this key portion right here is not staked at all. This one is. The other differences I heard is on, and somebody said that the, uh, the, the extractor on the Gen 4 is internal where this one is not. And well, they both look internal to me. But from what I heard, that the Gen 40 extractor is going to last a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and pull out the firing pin and see what that looks like. Stand by. All right, another thing I'd like to add, as you can see, where the roll pin is right here for the uh, extractor as well. So let's go ahead and pull these things. You do have a little cotter pin right here. This one's probably going to pull out a little easier because I do have a lot of rounds down range with this guy. Now, this pin right here, as you can see, it is a little bit bronze, but the neat thing about 
these guys. And you got to be careful whenever you're bump firing one of these things because one of my buddies bump fired this thing with a hyperfire trigger. And because these firing pins are not free floating, a lot of times you're going to run into an issue where you're going to have a round go off that's not in battery and it'll blow the uh, magazine out of the bottom as well as damage your upper receiver. Let's take a look at this one here. Interesting. So this firing pin, as you can tell, it looks like it's a little bit shorter in stature than the other ones. I'm going to bring that in so you can actually see it. And I don't know if that is supposed to be that way. I'm going to call them and ask, and we will get a hold of some of the engineers. But as you can see right there, the nipple at the end of the firing pin is a little bit shorter. Can't be because of wear, because I've only put a, maybe 100 rounds to this thing at all. But it is a different design. All right. Well, anyway, there you go. That's some of the differences. We do have some contour differences on the bottom. There are some cutouts. You can see that this is flared in like that. This is the way it goes there. Uh, I have run the smokes out of this guy. But look at the... That's interesting there. At the end... It's more than a nitride finish off of it. I might want to check that buffer tube to see what's going on right there. Now, I am running that particular upper in this Gen 1, and I've taken, just now, I have installed this guy right here. This is a Spikes Tactical. This is a big-time heavy-duty uh, STX-9. Where's my scales? So one of the things I have is I've gone ahead and replaced the other buffer that was in here. This is the uh, Spikes Tactical 9X. I wonder what 9X means. Could it be that it weighs 7.7 .7 ounces compared to the other buffer that I was running on, which I don't really know how much that one weighs. I'm not going to pull it out to see. But from what I was seeing on this guy is that... It looks like it's being scratched up on the on the buffer tube here. Interesting. So what we'll do is I'm going to have to continue to do some research on this thing because that to my to me shouldn't be that way. There's no wear and tear on this guy right here. It might be that uh, that buffer tube has caused some problems. You can see where it's been, uh, that's got some ridges in it. Interesting. Now this is a Gen 1 lower that I put together. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. I don't think that that wear is any, that's a lot of wear. Anyway, let's just move on. I'm going to go ahead and put these things back together. Let's take this thing out to the range and give it a run for its money and see how much fun we can have. Here we go. Stand by. All right. One of the things I wanted to go ahead and do was take that buffer out just to see what's going on because there's an enormous amount of wear. And I'm not sure if it's the buffer or what, but you can see that damage right there is matched up right there. And what we'll do is I'm actually going to take and put a new buffer tube on, as you can see right there. Okay, and we were going to run a couple hundred rounds to this thing, and then we will test show what the differences are at the end of the day. If that continues to, to cause some problems there, then I'll know something's up. That there's just there's ridges cut into that one, and I'm not sure we're going to find out if it makes a difference or not. So let's go ahead. I'm going to run this new one on the this lower right here, and then uh, we'll see if that makes a difference. Here we go, let's do some shooting. Well, that's uh, 
part one of the first test for the uh, Palmetto State Army. This is the, uh, the 10 and a half inch upper. We're having a pretty good time out here hitting those uh, pieces of steel. Guys out here at uh, Mifflin County Sportsman's Association, this has turned this range into a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and put some more rounds down range. Also, by the way, this is the sight mark. This is their Ultra Shot M Spec. This is the bad mama jama. You guys will see a review coming up on that here in a few minutes. Here we go. Oh, the camera's still working. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is it. We punched about 150 rounds to this thing. One of the things I want to do, though, is I want to look at that buffer in a tube to see if I'm getting any damage on there. Now, again, we changed it out to the Spikes Tactical, and yeah, no damage inside of the buffer tube. So I think our culprit uh, on that last go around was probably our uh, buffer tube. Huh, very interesting. But uh, I will take <laughs> yard sale. Huh, back, okay, so anyway, we're having a lot of fun out here and I will tell you this, uh, the sight mark, well, maybe you can see this or not, but uh, has a, a two MOA dot. The one good thing about having something like this is that is a huge visible glass area and when you're trying to do acquisitions at a quick pace that thing is awesome but uh, let's go ahead and put some decent ammo in this thing and run it again I'm having fun with these steel targets let's do this here we go all right guys so what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna do four target engagements we're gonna do it under the clock we're gonna double tap both targets all targets as a matter of fact uh, again this is kind of like a really cool deal we're gonna sling bring it up and go into fires position should be fun. Let's see how much fun we have. <laughs> All right, guys, that's a lot of fun. We probably had a couple malfunction in there, uh, most likely due to me running out of ammo or my reloads, but. I'll tell you this right now. I'm excited because the wear in the buffer tube, because I changed the buffer out, is not existent. So that's good. Secondly, this guy right here, <laughs> the uh, sight mark M spec, this guy is right on the money. We're going to do a review on this thing coming up. But uh, anyway, uh, guys, if you're interested in this upper or even the whole thing altogether, this is a Gen 1 lower that I uh, put together from a while back. But guys, <laughs> that thing's awesome. I've always been a big believer that uh, 9mm subs, kind of like this, should be fully automatic. It's the reason why you're shooting it. Otherwise, just use a pistol. But this little guy is a lot of fun. Scooter Boy 32 if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom comes in 9mm. Oh. And a couple 30 round mags. <laughs> it's good boy 32. I'm out. Da -da -da. You're there. Here we go. Well, I don't think we did it in 1.08, but you're getting my drift. This is a Palmetto State Armory um, 9 millimeter uh, AR upper. Uh, it's a ten and a half uh, inch barrel with a M-lock foregrip. Uh, looks like it's already pin and welded with a regular bird cage on there. Um, the bolt carrier group it looks like it might be just regular actually. Uh, nothing else abnormal about it. It's got a regular uh, charging handle. 
Um, I like to do my hands like Coda Boy. All right, here we go. Uh, that is actually pretty cool right here. This right, how it dips in. Is there a, uh, I don't know the actual reason for that. Uh, save weight. Save weight, so it's, I guess, a lightweight thing. Uh, it's got a nice little decal inscription, laser imprinted inscription on the bottom of Palmetto State Armory. Uh, so much fun. I'm not good at it. A lot better than a lot of people.